So I'm Justin Becker. I'm here with Sharma Padilla. Today we're going to be talking about reactive stream processing using Apache Mesos. OK, so my part of the presentation, I'm going to focus on providing answers for two questions. Uh, why are we building yet another stream processing system? And how is this related to Apache Mesos? And so I'm going to start with the motivation for building yet another stream processing system. And so for some context, I wanted to start uh, with a review of, of kind of the evolution of databases. And so early on until recently, databases were strongly associated with ACID properties, transactions per second, which led to a few solutions solving a general problem. And these solutions worked really well for a long time. And then they didn't work so well. We ran into some scaling limitations. And this really led to a spike in innovation within the database community. Uh, to include NoSQL key value solutions. We had the emergence of CAP theorem. And now we have many solutions solving specific problems. And so for stream processing systems, I, in, in my opinion, we're in, in the early days. We have a few solutions solving a general problem. And if you look at those solutions, they all have common design themes or characteristics. Uh, a lot of them were originally designed to run in a data center. Uh, the, clus the clusters are usually uh, provisioned for peak utilization. Jobs have this sort of notion of being heavyweight or static. You deploy them into this infrastructure. Um, and a lot of times they have strong messaging and fault tolerance guarantees. And so when we thought about our problems, anomaly detection, system health, insights, analytics, measuring the customer experience, or what we call at Netflix, operational insights, where we're, we're acknowledging that complex systems will fail. And to achieve high uh, availability requires a deep understanding of systems uh, with a commitment to continuous improvement. And really, the mantra for operational insights is if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And observability and insights are the key. And so for operational insight use cases, we wanted a stream processing system that was a bit more specific to our needs. And we really preferred a system that had the following characteristics. We wanted it to be cloud native. We wanted the cluster to auto scale to get um, optimal utilization. We liked the, the idea of jobs being lightweight or dynamic. And we wanted jobs themselves to auto scale for optimal ut utilization. We also like this idea of stream locality, which Sharma will talk a little bit more about. Uh, and we also wanted this capability of configuring the jobs themselves to have different uh, fault tolerances and message guarantees. And so what did we do? We went ahead and proceeded to build our own solution. And we call that solution Mantis. It's a cloud native uh, system. It supports stream locality. It has a high order, um, high order functions for the programming interface. And it has a configurable job SLA. So when you submit a job into Mantis, you can configure the SLA for that particular job. OK, so how is this related to Apache Mesos? Well, Apache Mesos is fast and narrow in scope. And so fast is important for Mantis because we need to be able to schedule and execute jobs within seconds. Fast is important also because we want to add and remove machines quickly to react to capacity needs. Narrow in scope is important because we want Mesos to focus on resource allocation. We'll do the scheduling. And with scheduling, I'm going to pass it over to Sharman. He's going to talk about the specifics um, for scheduling in Mantis. Some of the first questions we get asked and we answered was that, well, we're already running on an Elastic Cloud. Why do we need another scheduler on top of it? It has a few reasons, one of them being resource granularity. This was discussed before. Granted, you can get very fine-grained uh, cloud instance elastic uh, in the elastic cloud these days, but by the time you get an instance that is tuned for the network throughput, you automatically get more cores, more memory, and we have different sizes and shapes of tasks that we can bin pack together. And another reason, uh, another reason is the latency that we already talked about. And the next question is, well, there's already good frameworks out there for Mesos. Why build another one? There's a few reasons. There's, there's a few that I want to highlight. One is the uh, auto-scaling challenge. 
Our scaling a cluster is actually relatively simple. If you define, for example, a CloudWatch metric as a function of the pending tasks that still need to be uh, scheduled, but the scaling down is what's harder. So for example, if you had four hosts and then uh, they're all four core boxes and you're using two cores on each, that's how you happen to have scheduled them. You're using 50% of them, but then you really can't scale down because all hosts are uh, already being used, at least partially. But instead, if you had scheduled them such that those 50% of the resources are all been packed into fewer machines, you can now actually terminate some of those hosts and that's how you scale down. So bin packing is going to be very important for scaling down. And another aspect to this is that when you schedule tasks, uh, not all tasks finish at the same time. Um, so if you are able to use the expected completion time during your scheduling, then you put them together, then that helps scale down as well. Another is stream locality. So suppose we have three different jobs that are connecting into the same source data stream. Uh, they would have three different uh, network connections into them, so there's more bandwidth usage. But instead, if I were to schedule them on the same box, there's one network connection, and this helps us scale um, quite a bit in terms of connecting to different real-time data streams. And then there's other stream processing specifics. One interesting one is back pressure. In a flow uh, such as this, when you've got data streaming in from the left, uh, and then expanding it out onto computation nodes that are doing analytics, uh, if some of the analytics are slowing down because they're computing a lot of data, then that's referred to as back pressure, where the, the uh, data that's being streamed in can start buffering up. And to handle back pressure, we want to do scheduling such that we horizontally scale more computation nodes and things like that. So very early on, uh, one thing we decided was that we're going to use one Mesos executor per task. Now that gives us good resource isolation as well. And we use Zookeeper for fault tolerance of not only the Mesos master, but of our Mantis framework ma master as well. And uh, we use the Mesos task reconciliation. We found that to be insufficient in some cases, so we augment that with our own heartbeats. Uh, we'll be looking at the, the registry-based uh, improvements in 0 0.20, actually. So we started building Mantis scheduler for that. So in Mantis, uh, the way it looks is that you've got a job, and a job connects to a data stream source, and it has one or more computation stages, and each stage can have one or more um, worker, and each worker is a Mesos task. So when I schedule a job, what it means is that I'm scheduling multiple workers or multiple tasks, and each task requires some amount of CPU memory, uh, number of ports, et cetera. And then they all eventually funnel into a, a, a uh, an output called a sync. So that's basically what we need to schedule. So what we've created, and what we find is that in spite of writing a framework, eventually when you come down to scheduling tasks, that is more generic. So we've created a scheduler called Fenzo that, is, uh, that can be used by any Mesos framework. At Netflix, we have two frameworks using this right now. And it, it provides out of the box a few things that are interesting to us. One is auto scale. Uh, you, you can define some rules and then it'll automatically scale up and down the cluster. Uh, you can have heterogeneous mix of resource types, big machines, small machines, a mix of different kinds of tasks. Uh, another thing that's important in operations is visibility. If a task is not getting dispatched, not getting launched, well, you want to know why. So it can give you visibility into exactly why it's not running. And there's plugins available so each framework can optimize its scheduling goals instead of just there being just one or two. And we think it's fast. Um, Fenzo is fast, like Ferrari Enzo. Um, so how does Fenzo fit into a framework? Eventually, a framework has a bunch of tasks to run, and it has a bunch of offers that it got from Mesos. You feed that into Fenzo, and it gives you a task assignment result that it, uh, the framework can then use to launch uh, through the Mesos driver. So when we look at the scheduling problem, we have n tasks um, and n possible slaves. And the way we look at it is that when a task is being considered for a slave, um, if it's either very urgent to run or it fits extremely well on the slave, let's go ahead and assign it. Otherwise, we keep it pending and then say, well, let's see if it either becomes urgent later or we find another slave where it fits extremely well, then we'll assign it. So that's the general idea. And then, I mean, scheduling problem is hard. 
Um, it's not like we've, we're going to solve that in real time. But then we play a bunch of tricks, right? One trick is the first fit. That's pretty common. A lot of people use that. And as long as all tasks can be dispatched in most of the resources, first fit can be pretty fast. It's almost constant order. And then if I were to consider that we're not going to reassign tasks that are already running and just going to use the available resources to launch new tasks, then for doing optimizations, it can be pretty compute intensive as well. So in the real world, we want to stay somewhere in between. We want to be closer to the speed side of things, but also achieve some optimizations. That's basically the tricks we're going to play. And the scheduling algorithm is actually very simple. It just gives a, a, a workflow for the scheduler to do. So for each task that needs to be scheduled, we evaluate fitness on a bunch of hosts. Now, for a completely optimal solution, you may want to do all hosts, but then in real world, we just need to find a host that has a good enough fitness, and that good enough can be defined based on the actual application or the actual goal. And so that's basically what it tries to do. So let me give you an example of how this works. So suppose I want to do a bin packing, CPU bin packing. So what I want to achieve is that I want to make sure that I use up a host such that all of its CPUs are used up before I start using other machines that have more CPUs idle. Then the CPU um, bin packing fitness calculator is as simple as saying use CPUs divided by the total CPUs. So if I had this five hosts here, uh, they have this ratio that come out of the fitness plugin. And then that lets me pick host four here, and that automatically does bin packing. Um, so again, going back to the algorithm, the good thing is I don't need to do this on every machine. I just need to do it until the fitness is good enough. And similarly, I can do stream locality by defining a plugin for fitness, saying uh, fitness is defined as the ratio of the tasks that are connecting to the same stream as the one that I'm trying to launch right now. And that automatically gives me uh, stream locality. But sometimes, well, we want to do more than just one calculation. So I can have multiple fitness calculators and compose them together. So I wanted to achieve CPU bin packing, memory bin packing, and stream locality. And I can assign them weights to say, hey, stream locality is more important than CPU bin packing or, or the other way. And similarly, you can have any number of cal fitness calculators and do this. So that's basically how our algorithm will work. So a quick note on how auto scaling works. Um, you can have multiple machine types in the cluster. And then, so for example, I have a, a machine type called M3 X large. It has a certain number of CPUs. And another machine type can have other characteristics. And I can define how many minimum of them to keep idle in the cluster. So as soon as more tasks come in, they all get used up. And then Fenzo gives a, a scale up action and say for this host type, add this many number of machines because we're running out. Or if it notices, because it does CPU bin packing and all that, if it notices I've got too many machines, the tasks have all gone, uh, then it gives you uh, the host type and a list of machine uh, host names that you can terminate now for scaling down. So this is important because at Netflix, because of the traffic variation over the day, uh, we can see orders of magnitude uh, change in the number of machines we need for computing what we're doing. So that is important for us. So in summary, we've, got, we've talked about Mantis. That's a new framework for stream processing. And Fenzo Scheduler, that uh, could be a generic task scheduler for any Mesos framework. So I think at this time, we can take questions if there are any. So are these uh, available in your open source portal? So we are uh, developing this right now. Um, we, are, we are ramping up on our production slowly. And I think. Uh, it will be eventually available in open source, not at this time. So if I understood the question right, um, so in a cloud, it makes sense to auto scale up and down. But in a data center, would that be relevant? Or what would you change? So auto scaling is an optimization uh, where you're trying to uh, optimize some outcome. In this case, the outcome is how many machines you're trying to utilize. Even in a data center, it makes sense. There are places where they're trying to optimize the data center power. And if you've got machines that are unused, they have a lower power footprint. Um, so I think this applies directly there. Um, so you mentioned as part of your task description, you have uh, an SLA. Uh, how is the SLO model, like what parameters can you uh, provide as part of that description? 
for the uh, task description? Uh, for the, the SLA portions of the task description, like what, what does that encapsulate? Is that like a deadline or um, you know, a certain percentage number of workers or something along those lines? So some of the SLAs, um, uh, well, so the task itself can be described as the number of CPUs it needs, memory, ports, the disk, and also slave attributes. Um, and uh, so that's basically what it is. Each task is uh, an independent task as far as Fenzo is concerned. However, there are higher level SLAs in Mantis um, at the job level to say, um, well, this job needs this many tasks to be running. And then it ties also into the back pressure that I referred to. Uh, when there's more computation going on, it's falling behind, then uh, we, can, we, we are going to be noticing that things are falling behind and then that goes into the scheduler to scale up. So then is your SLA essentially just a, like a standardized priority between all of the oh, individual tasks? Oh, okay. Tasks? So um, one of the things for us is that we are running in a cloud for a certain specific uh, stream processing application, and we do not expect tasks to be waiting. Um, so there's no task prioritization that's needed because we're going to auto-scale the cluster up to satisfy all the needs. However, Task priorities can be added into Fenzo on the front end side of things, uh, but right now we don't need that because, yeah, like I said, we're gonna be running all tasks. So in your bin packing algorithm, I saw some references to stream locality. Uh, so if I'm writing a Mesos framework, which is like Kronos, uh, Ma Marathon, or Aurora, like uh, do I need to do anything with those parameters in Fenzo? So stream locality is one such optimization. It's an example of how optimization can be done using Fenzo. Uh, for example, uh, there are certain constraints. I think we heard Connor talk about. Uh, and there could be two kinds of constraints, soft and hard constraints. Uh, they would fit in two different places into the algorithm, hard constraint first for resource selection, and then soft constraints to optimize where to achieve the constraints. Uh, those can be added right now. We haven't done that work yet, but that's possible. Is Fenzo kind of a full-blown scheduler, or is it just the kind of bin packing decision engine that you would incorporate into a full-blown scheduler? Uh, we think that Fenzo can be used to achieve a lot of optimizations. Uh, bin packing is something that will be available out of the box. But then, um, like I said, you can do a lot of constraint optimization using the same thing. Some applications do well when they pack together. Some applications do better when they're spread out. So I can have a fitness calculator that does the opposite of CPU bin packing. And for that application, it'll actually spread out evenly. So you can achieve all of those. So Fenzo itself is going to come with some optimization, uh, but then you can have other plugins put into it. Thanks so much. Thanks.